working power in the name of Jesus. Aren't you thankful for the name today? Yes, amen. But aren't you thankful for the name today, the name so powerful? Yes. Amen. That name that is so powerful. The name that can heal. Right. The name that can save. Amen. Amen. How many of you are thankful for the name today? Yes, amen. 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 You can make your way back to your seats tonight. Amen. And, uh, amen. Amen. Have you ever ever thought what it would be like without Jesus in your life? I mean, really, have you ever sat and just thought what life would be without Jesus? I mean, how, how many times, even those that are out in the world, they uh, something tragic would happen and they uh, yell out the name of Jesus and Jesus comes in and saves them and and uh, the difference is between us and them is we know that it was God. Right. But again, really, have you ever sat and just thought, where would I be, God? Right. Where would I be? If I didn't have you in my life. Yes, right. What kind of person would I really be if I didn't have you in my life? Amen. Would I be a drug addict? Come on. Come on. Man, would I be an alcoholic? Come on. Yeah. Or would I be in the grave somewhere, God? Mm. Well, have you ever thought about it, really? Have you really ever thought about where would you be if you didn't have Jesus? Right. What kind of person would you really be if you didn't have God? Jesus. Amen. 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 Aren't you thankful for God? Yes. Amen. Amen. For the Holy Ghost. Man, I uh, don't know how your guys' Sunday services go. Sunday night services, that is. But uh, I do feel like I have something to preach to uh, you guys tonight. And uh, the message that I did preach at home. Uh, not too long ago, but um, I do feel like God wants to speak to somebody in this place tonight, Amen. Amen. and uh, do a work in this house. And yeah. Yeah. I don't call myself a great preacher. Uh, I make the comment quite often that I can barely preach anyways. But I love God. Right, Praise the Lord. And if God decides in the middle of this thing to just take it, I want God to do what God wants to do. Right, amen. Amen. Right, amen. He sees in this house tonight what your problems are. He sees what your battles are. He sees what you go through every single day. Amen. Amen. So, if you have your Bible tonight, I want to turn to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 4 again. I want to give honor to your pastor in his absence. I love and appreciate him so, so very much. He's a friend of mine. I know that if I ever need someone to pray, that I can call him, and I know that he's going to pray. Right. Yes. Yes. And I appreciate a friend like that, Amen. a friend that I can call and talk to. And uh, there's been times that we spent an hour or two on the phone just talking about stuff, and that's a real friend, a friend that's going to be there and help you pray through some things. Yeah. And I, I really, really appreciate 
your pastor, Brother Smith, and his friendship. And again, allowing me to come and, and try to help take care of the services for him. And uh, that's my main purpose is to try to be a help to this church. Praise the Lord. I'm not here to try to destroy anybody. I'm not here to try to take uh, pull down somebody. But I come to encourage somebody to be a help to maybe, amen, give you the strength that you need to keep going on living for God. All right. Amen. And so, look at Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 4, starting in verse 1. No, I'm sorry. Starting in verse 4. And Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son that was lame of his feet. He was five years old when the tidings came of Saul and Jonathan out of the Jesuits. And his nurse took him up and fled, and it came to pass, as she made haste to flee, that he fell and became lame. And his name was Mephibosheth. Amen. Mephibosheth. And I want to preach just for a little while tonight, if you'll help me on this subject. What God sees is different. What God sees is different. Amen. Amen. So, uh, if you would help me tonight, let's pray. I'll have God help us. Amen. Can we do that, church? Can we just take a few moments and pray uh, tonight and ask God to really help and move in this service? Amen. Come on. Can we do that? Can we get our mind focused? I understand there's some distractions and some things that are going on, but... Amen. God sees. Come on. Can we do that, church? Come on. Let's just close our eyes and let's get our mind on God. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. God wants to do something in this house. God wants to work in this place. God, I'm asking you, Lord, to help us, God, to run out every spirit of distraction. To help us, God, to get in tune and stay focused with you tonight, God, to help me. God, to preach, oh, Lord, to help me, God, to be a mouthpiece. Uh, God, to be, O oh Lord, a vessel in this place tonight, God, to help us, Holy Ghost. Uh, oh, God, once again, Lord, uh, help us, God, to stay focused and in tune with you, God, to stay connected uh, in this house. Oh, God, we need your touch. Uh, God, we can't do anything without you, God, uh, but we need your divine power, God, to come uh, and flow and move across this house, God. Uh, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we clap our hands uh, on the hill? Uh, Come on, let's do it like the Bible says. We shout in the hill in the words of triumph. Oh, our God is worthy. Oh, he's worthy of it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Man, thank you for standing on in the word of God. You can be seated. Amen. Hey, man, we read here a very tragic incident. And a tragic situation. Uh, the story beforehand, we know that Saul and Jonathan were killed in battle. Uh, Saul fell on his own sword, and then the one thing that God told him to take out came back and killed him. Uh, but the Amalekites were something that Saul was told and gave uh, a command to go and kill all the Amalekites. And Saul uh, went. And he went to the, to the land of where the Amalekites were. And uh, instead of killing them all, he decided, amen, to kill what was bad and keep what was good. But God didn't say that. God told him to kill everything, kill all the Amalekites. It doesn't matter. Kill, their, kill the ox and kill everything that belonged to the Amalekites and themselves. But Saul didn't do it. And one of the babies that Saul was supposed to kill grew up. And when Saul fell on his own sword... The one thing that Saul was supposed to kill took his life. But then we find here when the nurse, amen, heard that Jonathan and Saul were dead, she knew that they were coming. And so she took Jonathan's son and decided to take off running. The next thing you know, she fell and landed wrong. And Mephibosheth was lame. He wasn't able to walk like he used to walk. He wasn't able... Amen. To do things like the other kids were able to do. He 
had to sit there and watch them play ball and watch them, amen, do things that he wished he could do. But Mephibosheth didn't ask for it. He didn't, amen, want to be lame. He didn't, amen, want the situation to be like what the situation is in this ordeal. But it happened. And we know what Mephibosheth was. Amen. He was a man that had problems like everybody else does. Right. A man that had battles and situations. And he had, amen, to the point to where he was scared for his life. Right. Could you understand living in a time to where you're constantly scared and constantly looking around the corner to see if they're going to come? If they're going to come. And so Mephibosheth began to go and find a different place to live. And as he got older, he hid out and hid and lived uh, in a different place. But, amen, I began to read over this after service this morning. And God began to deal with me about how we see compared to what he sees. All right. All right. And as my job, I'm a quality inspector, so I use my eyes all the time. I got to make sure to pay attention to perfect detail to make sure the blueprint adds up to what the customer is wanting for the tank car that we're building. And so it is very, very important that as a quality inspector that I get every detail. And I can only see so much because I'm flesh. I can only see what God allows me to see. But God sees beyond what we see. Right. Amen. May God sees beyond what we see. We can just see, amen, what we can see. We can see, amen, someone's futures and their personality. But we don't see what's going on within themselves. We don't have that ability to go and look beyond, the, amen, the surface of the battle of what they're doing and what's going on within themselves. Right. Amen. And it seems like it's a constant thing that, amen, that we go through to where, uh, I don't know, amen, about you, but I'm very big when it comes to first impressions of a person. Yeah. Amen. To see exactly what they're going to be and how they act and if they're going to have a good spirit or if they're going to have a bad spirit. And that's what I see. But someone come up to me and, and they greet themselves and they're super friendly. Then my impression on them and what I see is that I can make a friend of this. All right. I can see myself hanging out with him. Come on. But then again, if they come to me and they have a bad spirit and they say some things and whatnot, then I'll show myself friendly. But I'll try to distance myself because I don't want to be around them. And that's what I see. But then again, I don't see what's going on within themselves. I don't see the battle that they constantly fight and constantly go through. And the circumstances and everything that they go against every single day. Amen. But if we could ever learn, amen, to look at God's point of view. If we can ever learn to say, God, to help us God, to not look at it from our flesh, but look at it right. through the spiritual and say, God, right. I understand that they may, amen, have a bad spirit or they may be going through some things, but help me, Lord, amen, to see it through your eyes. Yeah. Help me, oh God, to see some things different so that way I can help them, oh Lord, to lead them, yeah. amen, to you so that way you can make a change in their heart uh, so right. you can make the difference in their life. Uh, right. If we can have that spirit and that attitude, uh, I believe we can see a great revival. All right. I believe we can see, amen, all these empty pews, uh, amen, filled. Uh, if we have the attitude, oh God, let me see what you see. Right. Don't let me see what I see uh, because I see bro I don't see the brokenness. Come on. I don't see the hurt. I don't see the pain. I don't see what they're going through. But God, help me to see what you see yeah. so that way I can help them be what they can be in you, God. The potential that they can have in you, God. Uh -huh. Amen. So we find this man by the name of Mephibosheth. And Mephibosheth, when he decided he got a little older, not even really older, but when they decided to leave, they found him in a place called Lodabar. Lodabar was close by. But 
That place, Little Bar, means shame. A place of shame. So you can understand what Mephibosheth was really dealing with. Right. It was a shame. Yeah. Amen. He didn't know what to do. He's stuck in his house, not being able to live a life like a normal person because of his situation. And then Mephibosheth was always on the lookout because whenever his accident happened, they were trying to run and get away before they were caught in the middle of the battle and got killed themselves. So Mephibosheth always had this idea in his mind that David was always going to come after him. Right. Felt like David was going to send his mighty men to come take him out. But Mephibosheth didn't know who David really was. Right. And I know I preached about him this morning, but David was different than Saul. Right. Right. David was a man after God's own heart. David never had it in his plan to go out and try to catch and kill Mephibosheth. Right. Amen. But Mephibosheth never thought about that. He thought that he was just going to be the same. He thought that they were going to come after him and kill him and destroy him. But again, when David took the reins of being king, he made a promise to Jonathan. And he told Jonathan that he was going to pay him back in some way, whatever he could do. Amen. But since Jonathan was gone and Jonathan had died and even King Saul, David one day was walking around and wondering how he could honor his friend Jonathan. Yeah. And so he began to ask a servant and then told his servant, is there any family left that I could honor, that I could do something for. And the servant spoke up and said, Jonathan had a son. And so David said, well, where is he? What's his name? And they said, well, his name is Mephibosheth, and he's uh, living in Lodabar. And David said, go get him. You talk about scary yeah, right. for Mephibosheth, right? Yeah. He sent his mighty man to go get him. I don't know about you, but if I heard some big old horses trotting up and some men that were twice my size, I'd be locking every door. Right. I would be trying my way to figure out how I'm going to escape uh, because those men look like they're on a mission to kill me. Yeah. And here it is, Mephibosheth couldn't get around. He's lame. Uh, he had his little walker. He had, I'm sure he had a servant himself that kept after him. Uh, but again, here it is. The servant's looking out. Yeah, they're coming. Here they are. Mephibosheth is over there. Well, hide me somewhere. Put me, put me in the closet. Do, do whatever you got to do to keep them from getting me because I know what they're here for. They're here to finish the job. Come on. They're here to take me out. They're here to kill me. Come on. They're trying to do what they were supposed to do whenever the nurse was running and I fell and, and I'm in this situation. So, so just hide me somewhere so that way they can't, they can't kill me. Right. But here it is. Mephibosheth, whenever he went to go hide, he couldn't hide. And, and the mighty man of David went in there and found him and said, David wants to see you. Now he really got scared. Yeah. I couldn't imagine, well, they're not going to kill me here. They're going to take me out in front of the king. They're going to destroy me in front of the king. And so as he's going, I'm sure he's shaking to death and was there trotting back to the kingdom and David is going back and forth, I'm sure, on, on his throne, and he's probably waiting patiently for them to show up, and, and then he decides to sit down, and, and you know, here comes Mephibosheth with the mighty man, and he's walking in there, and, and help, oh, he's got to help him because he's lame, but then again, here's David, Mephibosheth, really got scared, because he thought he was going to be executed right there in front of David. But David come off of his throne and he knelt down and he told Mephibosheth 
you're going to eat at my table. All right. You're going to sit at my table. I'm going to take care of you. They said, so, there's lunchtime, there's breakfast, there's lunch, and there's dinner. I want you there. I've got a place next to, you, to me. So I want you to sit there and enjoy the meal. I don't, I don't want you to go anywhere else. You're going to stay here. We're going to take care of you. I made a promise to Jonathan, and this is how I'm going to repay him. Praise the Lord. But then the chef hey, he's relieved. Woo! I'm, I'm good now. Right. Hey, Amen. Man, if I'm here, Joe will help me out here. I promise I'm not going to take much longer. Hey, Amen. But God sees things differently than we do. You hear me? God sees things differently than we do. Right. Right. And then he sees the potential in what you can do for God. And he sees things that we cannot see. Amen. And that's, that's how Methuselah was seen. He was seen, amen, he thought of himself as, well, this is it. But David, amen, knew what he had to do. He knew that, amen, God was going to do something and he was going to honor, amen, Methuselah because he made a promise to Jonathan. He wasn't going to break the promise. This is the best way that he knew how to do it. It was the best way to know that he could go in and do something, amen, for Jonathan, amen, in his absence of being dead, Amen. But you know what? God sees things differently. You hear me, young person. Uh, oh, whenever the world looks at you and, amen, and you're dressed all modest and you're dressed all holy and they're looking up and down and saying, why in the world are they dressing like that? that? It's because that's how they see it. But God sees nothing but holy. God sees nothing but pure. God sees nothing but beauty. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. God sees things way different than we do. We might see things in a bad way, but God always tries to find the good in somebody. Yes. Amen. Because he knows that there's a heart and a soul that can be potential. Amen. In the kingdom of God. Amen. That can go out there and be a help to this world and be a help. Amen. And bring somebody that's lost and hurting. Amen. And say, you know, amen. Help me, oh God. See what you see. Mighty God. Mighty God. Amen. 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 If you boys will help me with this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And Brother Gould was here. He uses cane or walker. But he's not here. Now it's not a very big table. And I know David probably had a bigger table than that, but Amen. I'm teaching them for future reference when they get married. <laughs> Amen. Looks good. Amen. So, I know it's a small table. I mean, most of y'all can't see it. It's sitting back there. Uh, but could you imagine? when Mephibosheth first came in to the dining room. How he walked with his walker. Or if he had to be wheelchair again, I don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us how. But here, but here, actually you three boys can help me. Here it is. I want y'all three just to stand on the outside of the like y'all are sitting, I know it's short. Okay, so here y'all y'all are act like y'all are talking, y'all are praying, whatever. Y'all are in David's mighty men. So they're sitting there already at the table waiting. Here comes old Matthew the chef walking in and they all stop and look. <laughs> and what in the world they in their mind they're thinking, what is this guy doing? Yeah. Who is this guy? Why why do we have some crippled? Coming into the into the dining room. Right. That's what they're thinking. Yeah. David hasn't came in yet. And they're, too, they're talking and, hey, what is this dude doing? Walk in and he's barely getting around and he, he's trying to make it. And, and they all decide to get away from him and find seats together so that way they can, don't have to sit by the crippled man. Right. But the difference... 
whenever he's walking, they can see the problem that he has. But once he sits down, they don't see that problem. He sits down, and they're still talking, and I don't know what Seth's doing, and uh, he really needs to just go because he don't belong here. And uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it. He don't belong in the kingdom. I don't get it. Man, he needs to go. He needs to pack his bag and walk out of here. Here comes David. Sits right next to him. Yeah. Hey, y'all. Y'all meet my buddy in Mephibosheth. This is Jonathan's son. Yeah. He's going to eat with us for the rest of his life. All right. Yeah. My. So listen to me, man. You have any thought, bad thoughts about it? You better keep it to yourself. Yes. Right. right. Hallelujah. Because he belongs at the table. Yes. That's where he belongs because I made a promise to Jonathan. Yeah. Amen. And that's what we have the problem. Even in church, if someone comes in, and we're too busy examining what's going on in their life. And it could be whatever, like I said this morning. Uh, and then they could have a, a bad odor. They could look. They could have right, crazy right. hair, whatever it is. But I don't, I don't know, God, what is he doing in here? Come on, well, you, just go ahead and go. There's, there's no place here for you. Free. But God sees some things different than we see. Right. He sees somebody that's broken, somebody that's hurt, somebody that's screaming out for some yeah. help. Yeah. We don't need to be like the man that says, no, Mephibosheth, you don't need to be here. But we need to be more like David and say, here, you can dine All at the right. king's table anytime. Amen. That's what we need to have is an attitude. Let's say, you know what? I know that you're going through things. I know that you're battling some stuff. And I know you might be lame. But let me introduce you to the one that can make you whole. So God sees different than we do. Right. Amen. I want revival so bad. Yeah. Not even for the Church of Gilmer, the Apostolic Gilmer Church, but for New Beginning Apostolic Church. Yeah. Amen. Yes. And it, it bothers me to see empty pews. It bothers me to see empty pews. Uh, Friday morning, me and Elder Putman and Elder Coldy were up in the church praying. And when I go pray at the church by myself, I I go even even Saturday night. I was going across here and saying, God fill them. Yes. Jesus. God fill it. God, with the broken, whatever it is, God, you see that family that's broken, God, I want you to fill it. God, you see, oh, Lord, that young lady that's battling some things in her life, God, fill it. God, I know you see, God, I know that you can work, but I'm asking God to fill all these pews that, to where they're going to have to get a different building. That, oh, God, to where, oh, Lord, they're going to have to uh, and then make some more room for other people to come. Uh, oh, I don't like seeing empty pews. Jesus, hallelujah. I don't like seeing the empty pews. And then we ask, oh Lord, we, we want it so bad, but sometimes the reason why we're not having revival is because of us. That's right. Preach. Because of us. Just think about it for a second. It's true. Why are we not having revival? Not because God's not showing up. Right, right. God shows up. Yes, He does. And it's always the same people coming. Amen. It seems like we're so satisfied with just getting help from ourselves and not trying to help somebody out there. Preach it now. Preach right. But God sees different than yeah. we do. Yeah. God sees potential in somebody out there. What if you're out and about at Walmart and God smokes you and said, won't you go talk to that person over there and let them know that God loves them. Preach now. And you don't do it. Mm. 
But what if that one person could be the whole link to revival in this church? Right. What if that one person could bring, uh, amen, a whole entire slew of people, uh, but you didn't obey because uh, what you're too ashamed or afraid and don't know the words, uh, you oh, just let God God. use and speak through you uh, oh, because man. God sees some things different. That, that's what you got to do. That's Great. the whole key Great. to revival. Amen. It's whenever you're out and about and God tells you to go speak Great. and you don't do it. No. I'm guilty of it, church. Yeah. I've got to repent myself uh, because of it. But you know what? The reason why we're not seeing revival oh, is because of ourselves. That's right. The That's reason right. why we're not seeing people saved yeah. and people being baptized in Jesus' name and receiving the Holy Ghost oh, is right. because we're too busy passing them by Come instead on. of listening to God oh. and saying, Lord, speak to me Preach when it. I'm out there. God, Preach. speak to me, Preach. oh God, so that way I can help somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Because, oh Lord, I know that you teach things different than I do. Come I know, oh God, that I'm just flesh and human. Oh God, but you see Help us, God. Help us, God. Jesus, Jesus. Say, Lord, whatever it takes. God, don't ever let me have the excuse that I'm too busy to reach out to that person. Don't ever let me have the excuse of saying, God, I don't got enough time to do it. Because it could be that one person uh, yeah. that flips this church upside down when it comes oh, to people being in revival. All right, all right. All right. All right. But oh, I'm just too busy, you know. Hey, Amen. I got things I gotta go do. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry, God, but it may be next time, but there may not be no next time. Uh, hey, Amen. He might decide to go to somebody else oh, uh, and see if they're willing to. Uh, Amen. Hey, say, I'm gonna go talk to that person uh, oh. and let them know. Uh, I understand it might be a little difficult, uh, but you know. Do it, God. Revival in this church, God. Lord, I want to see revival. I want to see pews. You know, God, but help us first, Lord. Help us first, Lord, to be sensitive to whatever you're speaking. God, when our boss comes in that office, God, and you tell me to talk to him one more time about you, God, don't let me just sit back and not say anything. Oh, God, whatever uh, that young lady, uh, amen, that I'm doing something for, or amen, or helping out with whatever it is, uh, amen, if I'm checking her out at the grocery store while she's filling her bags, God, don't let me, Lord, amen, not say something to her about it. Oh, God, I know, God, amen, I don't want to be ashamed. God, I don't want to be the type, but I'm going to be afraid to tell them about Jesus. Oh, God, oh, help me, oh, Lord. Oh, God, I don't see what you see, God. They can be the one that goes home after you told me to speak to them and they decide, amen, to take their own life. Oh, God, but I can be the reason why they don't, God. Help me, Lord, to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost when you're speaking to me. Oh, God, because... There's a world out there that needs us uh, yeah. to be a witness unto them. Mm-hmm. Ah. God sees things different than we do, church. Yes, he does. Right. God sees things different than we do. Help us, Holy Ghost. I want to see revival, church. Jesus. I want to see revival so bad. We've been We've been praying about it back at home, and we've been having people come, but God spoke to me the other day, and he said, the reason why you're not seeing revival is because you're going to start with yourself. All right. 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 Jesus. Hey, man, can we pray right now? I feel feel it after the Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on, church. Come on, I'm about done. I'm about done. Come on, that's it. Come on, be the next one. Be the next person that God uses. Be the one that God speaks to whenever you're talking to whoever it may be. 
will be the one or whatever you're walking down and about and just finding your day to call ladies and then someone on your heart to call and you call them and next thing you know they come oh but be so sensitive to where oh God if he speaks don't question him you just say yes sir yes God I'll do it and you pick up the phone do whatever it is oh help us oh God help me God oh God to not think that I'm better than somebody else and they don't need help oh God but help me oh Lord to be sensitive enough Oh God, to reach out and say, God, you see this soul. God, you see this need. God, you see the problem. God, you see the situation. But help me, God, to be, oh God, a testimony to somebody. Oh God, to help me, oh God, to be a testimony to somebody. Oh, come on, church. Can we keep praying? Come on. Amen. They can come to the music. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Oh, come on. We need it. We need to have and then that commitment to God and say, Lord, whatever it takes, I want to be a witness. Oh, God, I don't want to be a soul winner in this hour. Oh, God, I'm not going to be ashamed no more. Oh, God, I'm not going to be amen. Talk to her and say, I'm too busy. Oh, God, but help me, oh Lord. Oh, God, to be a soul winner and reach the lost. Oh, God, to reach the ones that are hurting, to reach the ones that are broken hearted. Oh, God, to reach those. Oh, God, that are screaming out within themselves. Help! Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Amen. Can we gather around the front? Can we pray? Can we bow together as a church? Oh, hallelujah. I want to see revival in this church. And I know your pastor would want to see revival in this church. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, church. We can just bow together. If it's appropriate, why don't you link up with somebody? Put your arm around 